Armin Levac, 1045 the team, 1045 the team.com. Uh, big, big hoops games going on tonight at the United Center. Uh, the State Farm Classic, and it's going to be right here, uh, 7 o'clock tonight. Two games, number two Kentucky taking on number five Duke, number four Kansas going up against Michigan State. And our, our good friend, friend of the show, Capital Region native, Mark Kessishir is there at the United Center. What's the vibe like at, at the United Center for these big games? There's a lot of anticipation, guys. Uh, we were here two years ago, and, I mean, it literally had a Final Four feel. I mean, the place was sold out, over 20,000. Uh, you've got some of the best uh, college prospects, especially our first game with Duke in Kentucky. You're probably looking at it. If you want to know who's going to be in the NBA draft and some of the lottery picks, you might as well uh, tune in and check it out. But it's uh, it's always a great vibe. Derek Rose was here a little bit uh, you know, to check in with. Uh, John Calipari, his former coach, and, and see how Kentucky looks. So it just it has a big time feel right here in Chicago. It's uh, it's always a great tournament. I look forward to it every year. Kesty, did did D Rose hurt himself in any way while he was there? <laughs> you know, we were watching him, and uh, you know, he was uh, he was a little gimpy, but hard to tell. I'm sure he was just grabbing some. Uh, he was across the street at the Bulls' new facility getting his treatment, and then they're getting set to fly off to Phoenix later where they'll take on the Suns. But, no, I, I think after last night so far, no other injuries since. Whew, all right. Uh, uh, at Mark Kessis here on Twitter, uh, Mark with a C, of course. Now, Kesty, the last year the, the big story was Kentucky, their dominance of, of just about everyone. What's it, what are the what's the broad landscape of, of college hoops this year? What storylines are you looking to see develop? Well, I think, uh, you know, the two teams we have going in this first game, uh, you know, it's just, You've got these outstanding recruiting classes year after year, and you and you see, can they blend together? I mean, Kentucky at the start of last year, you had a sense. Obviously, you know they they had they had some guys back from the year before, especially at the point guard position, where you thought, okay, maybe they could make a run. I didn't think you know they had a chance to go undefeated at the beginning of last year, but you just kind of get the sense of the super team. We're still in that mode, but can they? You know, can they come together when it's all said and done? It's always great to have these games right off the top, but you know, all these teams are going to look different. You know, once they get through their conference schedule, so I think we're in the same pattern where you got super teams. You've also got uh, those, you know, smaller, um, you know, non BCS conference teams that have big time players who slip through the cracks. So it's kind of hard to get a gauge after just one weekend, but it feels very similar. Uh, to last year, and, you know, we just look forward to it kind of unfolding and figure out, you know, who's got the best chance to win this thing. Live from the United Center for the College Basketball State Farm Classic, it's our it's our boy Mark Kestis here right here on 104.5 The Team, uh, 104.5theteam.com. Uh, Kesty, I'm joined by Brady Farkas. He's our Capital Region Insider, and uh, if it's okay with you, he's pro- just he probably knows every connection you have locally, so be ready. <laughs> Brady, fire away. I'll probably learn something. Kesty, we saw you Albany – Hold Kentucky to 78 points last Friday night. How long is it going to take for the Wildcats to uh, to excel in the half court set? We know about their offensive firepower out on a, you know in transition, but in the half court, you Albany played pretty well against them. Yeah, they did. You know, it was we took a look at that game and said, you know, Albany leaves uh, feeling like you know they they put up a good show. They acquitted for themselves very nicely. I think um, what's interesting when you look at Kentucky is. You got Tyler Eulis back. He's going to lead the show. You got Jamal Murray, who's an outstanding talent from Canada. And you just get the sense maybe this isn't the year that Murray's going to show everybody what he could do because he doesn't have to handle the ball and he's not necessarily, you know, a catch and shoot kind of guy. Maybe next year when the ball's in his hands, maybe he completely opens it up. So, but that's the thing. I mean, you got these awesome parts, you got these great players, but maybe not playing you know, in their most comfortable positions. So now it's just a matter of, like you said, how long will it take for them to figure out how they could be best? And we may not know that until they're deep into the SEC season. Kesty, you know, you see more college basketball than any other human being alive, I think. When <laughs> when you look at teams like you, Albany, who, you know, they, they've been breaking into the national scene slowly but surely, take on a team like Kentucky, and you see Sienna go up against Duke, the, you know, kind of – what would almost be considered a, a, a no-win-on-the-court situation. How does it benefit the smaller programs to take on the big boys? Well, I think it could do nothing but benefit. I mean, no one's expecting them to win in those situations. You know, they're going to hostile environments against great teams. Now, doing it at the beginning of the season, I think, is an advantage because nobody's seen each other. 
You know, there's not a lot of uh, film to break down. There's not, you know, you get a couple of exhibition games, but you're not really at your optimal peak. So that's the first advantage I find, too, really. No, no one's expecting you to win and, um, you know, the lack of familiarity. And then down the road, just saying, hey, guys, you know, we were in a tough situation against the top five team, and, you know, we gave, we gave them a couple of fits here and there. So it gives you a little confidence moving forward that, you know, you didn't lose by, uh, you know, 50 or 45 points. So I think it's, I think it's all beneficial. And that's the, that's the beauty with college basketball, too. You know, in college football, you lose a game, you get nervous, you lose two games, forget it. You have no chance to win a championship. And it's completely opposite in college basketball. You can make, you can make a run. Look at Michigan State, who we'll have tonight. You know, who would have thought they would have got to the Final Four the way they were playing during most of the season? But they made a run at the most important time, and they uh, you know, ended up having a real quality season. Mark Kessershire, at Mark Kessershire on Twitter. You can follow him, 1045theteam, 1045theteam.com. Armin and Levac, uh, happy to have the Capital Region native helping us break down these games. Duke wins the national championship, Kesty. They lose almost everybody. Is Grayson Allen the, really the, the main returner from that team? Is his athleticism the key to the game tonight against Kentucky? I think, uh, you know, it certainly is a huge part of it. I, uh, we got to see him last year early when he really wasn't getting time. And then obviously we all saw what he did in the tournament and in the Final Four. Um, they've got so many good players. He doesn't have to be. Um, you know, I, but I think right now the way the rules are set up, at least the directives from the head of officiating, Grayson Allen's a guy who's going to take it to the rim. And if you take it to the rim, with any kind of uh, you know real force, you're going to get to the line. He's already taken 19 free throws to the first two games of the season, and, and he's a good free throw shooter, so he's going to pile up points that way. But you know, having a chance to watch them shoot around this morning, Brandon Ingram is thin, but he is just outstanding at his size, at six nine, his skill set. Uh, Emil Jefferson's having a, a great year, so they don't really need Grayson Allen to score 28 points a game like he has the first two. Um, but that guy's been on fire since March last year. Kesty, you got uh, two big games tonight at the United Center for the College Basketball State Farm Classic. Uh, you just kind of uh, talked about Duke and Kentucky a little bit with the strength of Duke. What are you, uh, what are you looking for in Kansas, Michigan State tonight? You know, Kansas is interesting because I know they um, you know lost a couple of guys to the NBA. Though Cliff Alexander really wasn't much of a factor last year, and you know they also uh, lost uh, Kelly Oubre to the input to the NBA. But they bring back. I mean, this is really a veteran team. You got four starters coming back. You got your top three scorers. You got Perry Ellis as a senior. I mean, that how many times do you get these guys? You know, we're going to stay for four years, and that's a polished guy. So uh, I like Kansas. Michigan State's going to be without Gavin Schilling. One of their big men has a uh, turf toe. And Kansas, you know, they were embarrassed last year. I mean, they they got crushed by Duke. It was almost like they weren't ready for the start of the season. I don't think they were as good as. Uh, the preseason rankings indicated. So I think they have a little vindication on their mind. For as good as they ended up being and winning the Big 12 yet again, I think Kansas on the big stage at the start of last year has a little something to prove, and um, they might have their best shooting team ever. That's what Bill Self has said. And, uh, you know, they have a lot of driving kick and guys who can spot up and shoot. So I kind of like Kansas in the second game, but, you know, we've got the, we've got the, the Duke-Kentucky one-and-done game early, and then we got a real physical Izzo versus self battle in the second game. I like how it sets up. All right, 7 o'clock tonight. We begin the broadcast right here after Armin Levac on 104.5 The Team. Now, I have to ask you the most important question, Kesty. <laughs> What's that? Have you seen Ashley Judd yet? <laughs> well, the Kentucky people did come through, but I haven't seen her yet. Her style is usually uh, to show up uh, fashionably on time, but it's usually only in Lexington. So I don't know if she's made the trip, but the cool thing about this event being in Chicago, it moves year to year. It is so centrally located. We've got fans and alums of all teams. I would not be shocked to see her. And if she does, it's always a good sight to see. Yeah, if you want, you know, if you want to send along my number, you know, just go ahead. It's cool. Yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't mind. I'll just kind of slip it, and uh, I'll have to wait till after though, because I want to make sure I don't get arrested. <laughs> <in this game. laughs> oh, all about yourself, Kesty. All about it's yourself. Always, it's always about me. That's how it always works. He's Mark Ketchers here. He's going to be doing the call for us tonight with uh, Bob Valvano, United Center for the College Basketball State Farm Classic. That thing uh, tips off on our airwaves right after the show today. So uh, at Mark Ketchers here on Twitter. Thank you so much, Mark. I love. When you make time for us you when i hear your voice i know i'm about to to witness sports or or experience <laughs> sports i love that well i appreciate that guys thanks for having me on